Welcome to A Healthy Pet is a Happy Pet. I'm Sherry Carabin. Most pets sneeze from time to time, but if the frequency seems to be increasing, don't just assume it's a cold or allergies. In fact, as Mount Laurel Animal Hospital medical oncologist Dr. Erica Crick explains, excessive sneezing, especially if it's accompanied by symptoms such as nasal discharge or bleeding or even loud snoring, can be a sign of a nasal tumor which may be malignant. The vast majority of nasal tumors in cats are malignant. The incidence of um, nasal and sinus tumors in dogs is thought to be about one, is estimated to be about 1% of all tumor types. So nasal tumors are relatively uncommon as far as cancer types go in both species. The most common nasal tumor that we see in cats is actually lymphoma followed by carcinoma, which is basically a cancer of the cells that line the nasal cavity. Carcinomas are the most common in dogs, followed by sarcomas, which are cancers of like the more deep soft tissues in the nasal cavity. Nasal sarcomas are pretty uncommon in cats, and nasal lymphoma is actually very uncommon in dogs. Some of the signs that could indicate that a pet has actual cancer of their nasal cavity or sinuses would be excessive sneezing, drainage or discharge from the nose. Sometimes it's just one-sided. Sometimes it can be both sides. Um, nosebleeds as well. They may also have actually swelling or even what we call a facial deformity where all of a sudden there's a lump, either like right on one side of the nose, sometimes right on the bridge of the nose, what people might also notice is drainage even from the eyes or an abnormal eye position because sometimes these tumors can actually break out of the nasal cavity and start to extend to other areas of the face. The primary way that we, way that we diagnose it is through a CT scan of the head and neck area and then using what's called a rhinoscopy which is similar to like an endoscopy, very similar equipment, it's just going up the nose versus anywhere else in the body and obtaining some um, actual pieces of the tumor for biopsy. Radiation therapy would be considered the mainstay of treatment for both dogs and cats. The one exception to that, however, which is actually a pretty big exception, is that lymphoma is a very chemotherapy responsive disease. So for cats that have nasal lymphoma, sometimes chemotherapy alone can be a very reasonable option, radiation therapy alone, or even the combination of the two. Nasal carcinomas and nasal sarcomas are not particularly responsive to chemotherapy, so that's why radiation is the mainstay for patients that have those types of cancer. Our goal with treatment, say we're doing radiation therapy or it's a patient with lymphoma and we're doing chemotherapy, is to decrease the size of the tumor as much as possible. Ideally, even down to microscopic disease where you can actually find it for a period of time. But unfortunately, in a lot of patients, at some point down the line, it will ultimately progress. While nasal cancer isn't that common, it is serious. So the sooner it's diagnosed, the better. And that's all for this edition. And remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet. For DVTV, I'm Sherry Carabin.